is for the weak. Hey everybody, welcome back to Starfire Gaming. I am Sir Joseph and this is Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. We're on Footfall. We're going to talk to this Opticon guy. We got his quest done by surveying 10 planets. After that, we need to go back to the ship. We need to find the fuel lever is a quest um, and diagnose it. And we want to talk to Jay for her um, companion quest. And then um, depending on how much talking we end up doing, we may try to do the um, cogitator quest as well on the bridge before we go out exploring again. But before all that, back to Opticon. Access has been granted to the following options. Information, exchange, strengthening of diplomatic links, trade deals, donations. Show the data slate. Collected planetary data that may interest you. With a respectful nod, the tech priest takes the data slate. The collected data is of interest, significant, compliant with the criteria for cooperation. The Cognizance fleet thanks you for your contribution and guarantees the provision of the reciprocal service indulgence in the form of parts and equipment. Profit factor has been gained by one. Reporting, the Kappa Thread supply line is ready to continue cooperation with the Von Valencius dynasty in the sphere of planetary reconnaissance. All right, let's take a look at um, what he's got. We only got 27 trade factors, so we can't get the mobile extractums. And all this stuff requires us to be up at five. All right, we're not going to worry about doing trades with him. Let's head back to the ship. Okay, now we got to find the fuel lever, wherever that may be. Maybe Pascal knows. Maybe we just need to talk to Pascal. I don't know. Let's try that. Where is Pascal? Pascal's all the way down here by Jay, who we also want to talk to. Whoops, that's the cogitator. At least that looks like the cogitator. It's big enough to be it. Jay. Pascal. Hmm. Let's ask him this very first one here. That might have something to do with it. Strange messages have been appearing on the ship's log. What do you know about this error? That wasn't it. May your labors be effective and fruitful. Alright, let's go talk to Jai. We just wanna We just wanna talk about the uh... Allow me to thank you again for helping me with the cargo, Sherin. I am sure the Ashmags who squirreled away my goods won't give up so easily, and I'll hear more about their scheming yet. Let's strike a deal, Sherin. I will watch your back if you do me a favor and watch mine. <laughs> well, enough jokes. Is there something you wanted? Jay smiles brightly, showing her pearly teeth. The woman laughs mel melodically. Um, I'm assuming this is the one. Uh, was there some business you wish to discuss? 
Oh, Sherin, I did manage to spark your interest. Allow me to invite you to a more private place. My words are meant for your ears alone. Jay's face lights up with an enchanting smile. I'm assuming this is it because we're going somewhere different. Because of regular conversations, we don't do that. All right, there we go. The flickering light of dozens of candles plays across Jay's face, making her small smile appear even more mysterious. Shireen, the exalted one himself, brought us together the day you crossed Vitamin's threshold. He led us to the cargo and gave his blessing for its return. Do you know what people on my world say when such a things happen? What's gained is to be shared with your neighbor. She points at the container in front of her. One contains a polished Aldari rifle, a rare model, and the other holds an ornate sword. I'm sharing what I've gained with you. Please accept these humble gifts in honor of our wildly successful, though suddenly, suddenly struck friendship. So we got the Warder's Portent. Which is a long range rifle. And Bloodseeker Clave, which is a Drakari sword. All right, can't use any of those at this point in time. Truly wonderful gift. I accept it with gratitude. I knew you would appreciate the Xenos mastery of their craft. Jay beams at you, curling a lock of black hair around her augmented finger. After a brief pause, she awkwardly continues. So, the matter I wanted to discuss with you is related to my business. You know I sell Xenos artifacts to interested Imperial subjects and Imperial Trinkets to Xenos. Business is going well. My network runs even without my participation. But when it comes to expansion, well, that is where I hit a wall. Rivals, envious of my success, Jay throws up her hands, Falco especially. I am certain the theft of the cargo was his doing, but I can never predict what that ash mag will do next. And while the Imperium's authority may be fragmented in the Expanse, it could crack down on my people, or on people of my profession at any moment. Go on. If the rogue trader put in a good, good word for me with the servants of the Adeptus Administratum, I could become an official trade representative of the Imperium. Just imagine it. A little scrap of paper will offer me and my agents protection against Ashmag schemes, far better than any refractor field. And even the Inquisition will have to think twice before they mess with me, because I'll be a representative of the law in my own right. And the best part of all is that this will cost you precisely nothing, Shireen. All you have to do is stop by the Administratum Palace and obtain a certificate from Master of Seals. My informants tell me that the palace is located on Dargonus, your capital world. You see how everything is aligned so wonderfully? And of course, I will repay you in kind. How do I benefit from your gaining official status? Besides being in receipt of my eternal gratitude, Shireen, Jay playfully raises a bow. Won't, won't it be beneficial to have someone in your retinue with the weight of authority behind them rather than just another pawn? One slip of paper and I will be able to extend my network to systems far beyond footfall. My agents will be your eyes and ears throughout the expanse. 
Uh, that sounds simple enough. I'll help you. I like her having her uh, her contacts and stuff scattered out there, giving us information. Exalted one, bless you, Shireen. I couldn't find a better business partner on all the expanse. Jay ponders for a moment and then graces you with a dazzling smile. Friendship is a gift from the Exalted One, and we must cherish it. And you will have no complaints about your friendship, Shireen. I may, I may not be a trade representative of the Imperium just yet, but I can still help you with whatever you need. You must have some faction in mind that you would like to establish relations with. The severe Drusians, the hot-headed pirates of the Caspasilla. You merely have to use the right words, like a key for a lock, and people will open their hearts to you, or their wallets. I will arrange everything you merely need to ask. I wish to develop friendly relations with the Drusians. Not a problem, Shireen. I will have my people put the good work to you. Oh, 2,000 reputation. Nice. I will humbly wait until you steer your vessel towards Drus Dargosus. The Mercatum Tabula Officiale. It sounds almost as majestic as the Warrant of Trade. All right. There's a Drusian ship in our in this system too. We could probably go talk to in there. New quest. All right. Well, none of them knew where. Go down here. Let's just kind of run this through the ship bit by bit. All right. Oh, that's got to be it. Fuel system analysis. Well, that doesn't look good. System, the ship's Vox system is in need of thorough meet with the Vox Master on the bridge. All right, Vox Master. Where's the Vox Master? Over there by the... Is this the right direction? No, it is not. He's over here somewhere. I thought he was over here somewhere. Foxmaster Vigdris. Oh, right there? Yep, right there. A thin pale woman stands out among the rest of the crew. There is a thick bundle of cables coming out of the back of her skull and disappearing under her ceremonial garment. And you see that you see the grate of a quietly humming vox where the mouth should be. The woman sees you and bows her head, respectful greeting. How may I serve you, Captain? My personal log states that the system's vo the ship's vox system's malfunctioning. Can you explain? Lord Captain, the vox master is caught off guard by your question. 
It takes her a moment to find her words. The Vox system is functioning as expected, and no communication problems have been reported by any of the crew. Please allow me to check the system's calibration settings in your presence to alleviate any concerns you may have about its performance. The Vox Master's thin fingers, fingers dart between hundreds of wires and cables on the control panel. Flipping switches and turning dials, she issues commands and methodically checks the lines of communication with the crew on every deck. At last, accompanied by the sound of static, the crackling of the Vox, and the flickering of signal lights, the dance of her hand concludes. All finished, Lord Captain. No issues detected. The system is working ex as expected. She studies your face as she awaits your, prom your response. Thank you for your service, Mistress Toleman. Lord Captain, she offers an unusually deep bow, likely using it to mask her confusion. Critical task. The forgotten twin system is of particular interest to the rogue trader. Is it the forgotten twin system? All right, that's that's heading out into the into this. It's not something on the ship. We're not going to deal with the cogitator because that's been a lot of conversation stuff. We're going to go exploring. Ooh, we're going to go to the Drusian ship. Then we'll go exploring. See if they got anything. We got that 2,000 um, reputation with them. Got 27 profit factor. Still won't let us buy the... Says our reputation is too low. This is Imperial Navy, not Drusian. Let's see if we can get up to one. We can pick up this um, couple of things. Three shots dealing 21. That's even better, too. Well, let's see if we can get up to one, and then we'll worry about going up higher. A Dari trophy. Oh, that's right. We don't have any trophies. Okay. All right. Um, so I guess we need to get back to um, Trinitos. Lord Captain, I bring dire news. A feud has broken out between the clans that maintain the Void Shield Arrays. Rumor has it that the late Lady Theodora was seen on the lower decks, and so one of the families called for a rebellion against the Ursiper of the Void Ship. That is you. So far, no one believes their mad tales, but unrest has begun at the fringes of the compartments. The ship's enforcers are ready to eliminate the instigating clan or pacify the entire Void Ship crew. The decision is yours. What is this story about Lady Theodora? Rumors of Lady Theodora's presence on the Void ship have been circulating for a long time and appear to be deliberate provocations rather than ordinary drunken ramblings. Perhaps someone is intentionally stirring up the masses to rebel against you, or perhaps it is the influence of the warp. Enforcers are already investigating, but right now we need to stop the conflict from escalating any further. As long as the unrest continues, the void ship shields will not be operating at full capacity. Find the source of the rumors and punish those responsible. I don't want any unnecessary deaths. Lord Captain, as Seneschal of Wasserian would say, there are no innocents in such cases. The clans are endangering the entire void ship. Tussling over the strange and obviously false rumor. 
If you desire, I will convey your wishes to the enforcers later. But right now, the unrest must be stopped, and the people returned to the direct duties as or replaced. My wishes, Fox Master, are for the enforcers to sort out the situation before we forfeit the crew wholesale. Investigate the rumors and find the real culprits. And no violence. I'll see to it, Lord Captain. Well, wait, what? Oh, that's the one I think that we didn't have the high enough... Um, Vox 2. Lord Captain, we have an emergency. We have received word that there has been a sighting on the lower decks. The Vox Master's voice breaks. A sighting of Lady Theodora. The messages we have, cl we have received are incomplete and vague. Little more than yelling and hysterical claims. There are reports of casualties and unrest. The compliment or the compartment in question has already been sealed off, but I thought you might want to look at what's going into what's going on your, for yourself. Meh. The situation is delicate and, what's especially disturbing, there are mentions of Adora Tlas being present at the scene. What is Adora doing there? Adora broke her microbead, so I wasn't able to find out anything from her. But Lord Captain, Adira is a psyker. And we are in the warp. You are not the only one who would risk setting foot into that compartment. Or you are the only one who would risk setting foot into that compartment. And if you do not, if you do not, we will never see Adira again. I beg you, Lord Captain, do not ignore this matter. I'll deal with it personally. I need the exact location. Right away, Lord Captain. All right, let's take our normal groups. So I did level everybody up. I just remembered. I didn't say anything. And Argenta got a new bolter, which was better than her old bolter. So that's cool. All right, let's go see what's going on with Adira. Let's get everybody involved. There we go. A tech you 60%, that was a terrible thing. My success is irrefutable. The instrument terminal, an important part of the computer's, or the compartment's internal infrastructure appears to be in working order. None shall stand in my way. Uh, these rules about Lord Captain Theodora. Surely the cogitators regularly display me. reports on the screens. Of course not. I saw Endless chains of systems. Help. Wait. Many of which only high-ranking tech priests can truly understand. Alright, it's not a big map. There appear to be dead people on the... And now who deigns to grace us with their presence? Another gaggle of heretics and traitors thirsting to get their due for what they've done? Or it's the leader himself, who has finally grown tired of hiding behind others. Theodora von Valencius is before you, and she looks grotesque. A hole yawns wide in her chest. Rusted hooks protrude from beneath her skin, and a lumpen, inflamed scar cuts across her throat. The figure flickers, as though it is dropping in and out of reality. She looks at you with a with the wistful eyes of a corpse and smiles venomously. Rogue trader, we meet at last. I have grown tired of waiting for you to pay me a visit. Theodora's look is appraising, and her mocking tone turns to one of distaste. Indeed, centuries of selfless toil and effort, and everything I left behind has gone to this non-entity. Argenta's eyes spark with fury. Warp illusion! Be gone! 
Argenta, my dear. There is no need to take make such a fuss. Why don't we sit down over a cap, cup of recaf like we used to? I'll listen to your rapturous tales of sacred relics, portents, and your special path. You must have been so lonely without me here. No one else is willing to listen to your ravings or help you with your childish treasure hunt. Theodora laughs melodically, with almost without mockery. At the sight of the terrifying Theodora, Abelard's face turns sickly pale. Thrown spare us from the cursed apparitions of the arch enemy. Is that who, what you are truly praying for? I can hear how fast your heart is pounding with Syrian. I think down deep down, you hope this apparition never ends. What are you? Theodora's lips curl in a malevolent smile. What, you ask? You dare say that to me, little boy? I am Theodora von Valencius, Massimo of Scaros, rogue traitor of the Imperium and commander of this void ship. Alas, my glorious voyage through life has ended in the dullest possible way, by death. A nuisance I staved off as long as I could. But do not weep for me, my boy. I am still keeping an eye on my property and punishing all those who have failed me. Theodora bears her rotten teeth in a snarl, her laughter piercing. Where is Adira? What have you done with her? Me? What have I done with Adira? Theodora laughs mockingly. All I did was turn that little mutt from the fringes into a true servant of the Imperium. I gave her toys, I cleaned up her antics, I provided her with everything she could dream of. Oh, I had a great oh, I had great plans for poor little Adira. You're not Theodora. Theodora's dead. There is no coming back from that. I'm dead. How is that? I'm no different from those who have not yet crossed the divine the divide between reality and eternity. I see, I speak, I remember the wrongs you all committed against me, and for all those who failed me, I have already begun extracting my retribution. I truly am Theodora, the remnants of herself that she left behind in this world. I am an echo of her memories preserved in the minds of those who cared for her. I am the taste of tears split for the unsaid and the undone. I am the terror for she who failed to turn the tide of fate and who refused to look truth in the face. I am as real as the human passions that bring worlds to ruin. If you are Theodora, then tell me, who really killed you? Oh, wouldn't you like to know the answer to that question? I don't even know which would be more satisfying. To give you an honest answer, or leave you to languish in your ignorance? Hmm. We'll see how you conduct yourself, little boy. What do you want with me? Why are you waiting for me? Theodora rolls her eyes, warily rolls her eyes. Matters are so dire that the pleas of one of my servants breached death's veils to reach my ears. How could I ignore such a desperate cry for help? And from my little Adira, no less. And once I appeared here, of course, I had to meet the pretender who has allowed this deplorable state of affairs. I will send you back into the abyss you crawled out of. You, of all the people who ever threatened me, you are the most pathetic boy. All you, all, all that you possess now was given to you in error. You are unworthy of such a generous gift, and you are incapable of holding on to it. I am here to seek retribution against all who failed me. 
my brainless crew, my useless officers, my pathetic servants who turned their backs on their mistress in their darkest hour. And worst of all, you, my dear heir, you who have undeservedly claimed the warrant and everything else that is mine. I will drag it all to the warp with me, including you. It's about time. Never doubt me. Lines on the screen look fuzzy as though the cogitator's readout systems have been damaged or the data storage has been damaged. People's remains have been hideously mutated. The flesh has been the flesh seems to have melted at the edges and is thickly coated in stinky mucus. We go up there, we can go down here. Uh, let's go up. I'm still new to the art of exploring. Some loot. The walls lined and dented as though someone tried to break their way out. Labored, stuttering growls and periodic rattlings come from beneath the casing. Alright, that was nothing. I won't tolerate weakness. Workers with with um they, they don't have any heads. A huge shell ready to be loaded into the macro cannon breach. I'm I'm thinking they should probably have heads. A spirit look, look, look. Okay, that's just more stuff. Victory awaits. Where is she? I clearly remember her being around here somewhere. Yeah, no, nothing back there. Ah, there you are, my little coward. Why won't you look at your captain, Adira? It's wrong. It's all wrong. Look at her, boy. My little Adira is utterly trapped in her visions. No matter. I will allay your doubts. Lord Captain... Adira turns her head from her turns her head to you, but her determined gaze her de, God goodness gracious I can't read, but her demented gaze only rests briefly on your face before sliding away. Up close, you can see that the base of one of Adira's temple implants is blackened and melted. No, wait, Lord Captain, Lady Von Valencius. Adira raises her eyes to Theodora, who stands before her. Steer, tears stream down Adira's cheeks. You, you came back! Theodora cl clucks her tongue in sympathy, reaching out to tenderly stroke Adira's hair. Poor little Adira. There, there. How could I not come? You were crying for me so desperately. Your pleas carried to the very depths of the warp itself. The smile suddenly drops from her mutilated face. Why didn't you save me? Why didn't you warn me? Answer me, you insignificant wretch, or I'll drag the answers out of you myself. Theodora's fingers dig into Adira's scalp, meeting no resistance. Stop mocking me. Adira lets out a soul-chilling howl and tries to grab the hand tearing at her, but her fingers pass through the monster's flesh. I didn't hear anything. 
I didn't hear anything that could have had anything to do with you. I'm sorry, Lord Captain. I failed. Ah! Adira breaks into a, into a strangled scream, and you feel the air around you grow rapidly colder. Damage taken. Adira, one. Argenta wordlessly swings her weapon up and aims at Adira, who is struggling in the monster's hold. The sister of battle looks at her without an ounce of doubt or mercy. Argenta, stop! Argenta wriggles, wriggles her nose at your shouted command and lowers the weapon by a few centimeters, but she does not put it away. Adira, I'm your captain, not her. Listen to me and snap out of it. Adira shudders and goes limp. Then she blinks, disoriented, and looks at you. L Lord Captain! Damn it! Theodora shoves the psyker away with a low snarl. The rogue trader's body begins to change, losing its human shape. Chaos will devour you! It will determine, it will devour everyone responsible for my death. Die! Die for the de dele the delectation of my lord. Well, that's not... Oh, are these horrors? Boons of Zinch, Warp, Creature. I think these are pink and blue horrors, because these guys are blue and that's pink. And there are workers behind us. So Pascal is going first as per usual. Alright, put him over here to just take out that worker. Oh, there are two workers over here. Yeah, I still might put him over there. And let's bring Jay over here. As well. All right, let's put this up first. And then we're going to get rid of this thing. that on that guy. things. We're going to put this on. Cool. And we move to here. We charge this thing. And then we hit it again.
All right, Argenta. But we don't want to shoot our boss man. I'll do it. Nice shoot. Um. Yeah, that's about that. Jay gets stunned. Oh my goodness. We got a lot of horrors of the war, horrors of the war. Melting? Okay, we're melting. Good to hear. Forge ahead. Need this. Oh, he parried. Who is this? Vanguard takes each person that attacks him. We can do another turn. Let's just go ahead and take another turn. My time is now. Oh, he's got one hit point left. Already done. Opposing me was your biggest. We can't get. We have 20 movement points. Okay, so we only have 10 movement points. Oh, because we. Have, I thought we had more movement points than that. What? What? No! I don't know what I did that I turned off my turn. I ended my turn. I must have hit the space bar or something. Dang it. Alright. Do not dare ask. Target can't act. Why can't the target act? Alright, what's going on with you here? Got stunned over there for some reason. Okay. Well, that is not a good thing at all. All right, Argent to do something here. So that would hit our own people. Doubt is for the weak. Five of them left. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Guess we can start hitting that. Didn't do much, but anyone in the area of voice of the Lord must make a willpower or resistance test or become stunned. So that's what happened to us. That sucks. Um, well, who? See if we can kill him with a plasma gun. Good job. Put that out there. My vow is to serve. We'll 
you have any armor? I guess I should look at that. 36, yeah, we can. Okay, never mind. Um, I guess I'm done. And she missed. Ow! Alright, Abelard. I will do my duty. Indeed. 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 Wow, it didn't do much. As the Emperor commands, I act. None can escape the we go. judgment. Back all the way over there. All right, so let's give Ignatius to. Is he still stunned? We are still stunned. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I have read tomes of military tactics. I'm afraid not. Target's too far. All right, let's get a little bit closer. I'm not accustomed to being. Warned. There we go. Victory is imminent. I will do my target well. That was good. <laughs> He's got one hit point left. Nice shot, Adira. Oh, even better shot, Adira. Yeah, that must have been um, horrors, because a pink horror turns into two blue horrors when it dies. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Alright, so we want this up. And we'll do reckless. They both parried. That's terrible. Let's throw a buff up. As 
The Emperor commands. I act. Doubt is for the weak. For you, my Emperor! Good shooting. Jay can finally do something. A moving target lives longer. Living on the edge. Can't reach Abelard. It's a lot of shots. That's pretty awesome. All right, one thing left. Um, let's give Avalar an extra turn. Victory is imminent. Do. I care of this one. All right, down they go. Adira stares at you with crazed eyes while clutching the wounds on her head. At first, no sound comes out of her moving lips. Then she coughs weakly and whispers, Lord Captain, is it really you? Argenta trains her weapon on Adira and watches you closely. Are you all right? Adira removes her hand from her head and tries to wipe away the tears, leaving bloody streaks on her face. Then she touches her burnt out implant, frowning. I don't know. It should be quiet, but in my head, the whispering's louder. It shouldn't be like that. This abomination claims that you called her. Is it true? Me? Did I? Yes, Lord Captain. I, I think it was me who called her. I can barely remember. The voices, my old good whispers, they suddenly turned red, sharp. They started cutting, tearing, ripping me to pieces. I cried out. I called for help, and she came. Adira groans and clutches her head. Damn it! Why are the voices making so much noise now? Shut up! Shut up! The previous rogue trader has been seen on the ship recently. Was that your doing? Yes, Ignatius. I did it a couple of times when I had had too much to drink. At the time, I thought I heard her voice among the whispers in my head. The voice was so sad, so clear. I. I couldn't help myself. I answered. I hoped I could reach her there. Adira bites her lip. Ever since she died, since I first heard her voice in my head, the whispers have gotten louder, clearer, harder to resist. Resist? Resist. You hear the warp whispering in your head and you answered? Are you insane? You don't know what it's like. The most important person in your life, who's now gone forever, suddenly starts talking to, your, talking to you inside your head. How could I not try to reach her? I had to. She falls silent for a moment. Then, or when she next begins to speak, it is in a barely audible whisper. I know what you're thinking. During the warp jump, 
when Lady Theodora came out towards us. I keep thinking about that meeting. I keep blaming myself. Why didn't I divine it? Why didn't I stop her killer? These thoughts have been playing in the back of my mind, day after day, choking me with guilt. And you know what? The one on the officer's deck? I don't know what that was. But this time, here, this was a product of my guilt. The accuser straight out of my own mind. So what am I supposed to do with you now? The deer turns sharply to face you. Ignatius, I know after everything I've done, you have no faith in my willpower or my strength, but I can fix everything. It's just, I'm not at my best, you see, but maybe we can find a way to replace my implants or some other remedy, a better one. Lady Von Valencia said that such a thing could be found, if not here, then elsewhere. I just need it before, I just didn't need it before, but we just need to find it. We need to figure out where to look for it, and we'll get it. And until then, I'll keep myself on a tight leash. What will happen to my crew while we look for this remedy? Adira swallows and straightens. I'll pull myself together, Lord Captain. The death of Lady Von Valencius knocked me for six. I'll get myself under control. No more booze, no more obscura, nothing. And I'll stop walking around the lower decks. I'll be stone cold sober. She determinedly wipes the tears and blood from her face. I want to help you, Adira. We'll think of something. Adira covers her face with her hands and tries to hold back the sobs. Th thank you. Thank you, Ignatius. I won't let you down. You're making a mistake, Lord Captain. Perhaps you will find something to slow the decline, but it will not stop it. Only a miracle can save Adira Tlas now. Why? I've heard enough stories about the ways of extending a psyker's life, but I don't think you'll like—I don't think you'll like all of them. The deer awkwardly shakes out her stained clothing. I—I I think I better, with your permission, Lord Captain. She sways, takes a step back, and faints. Lord Captain, the Vox Master's shaking voice comes over the comm bead. I received a report that the shooting on the lower deck had stopped. I presumed you had brought the situation under control, awaiting further instructions. Ugh. I got rid of the warp solutions. Adira is alive. Bring her to the Chirurgeons and have them see to her. You hear unconcealed relief in the voice in the Vox Master's voice. Of course, Lord Captain, as you command. Alright. Um, so we are at a good stopping spot. We're actually beyond a good stopping spot, but we couldn't do anything beyond that. Um, I am gonna go ahead and um, loot off camera. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. As always, like, subscribe, and comment. I'll appreciate that as well. I've been Sir Joseph. You guys are amazing. Until next time, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you later.